In case you were unaware, this time last year, I caught myself a 60 pounder, and this is the rig that I actually caught him on. Now, I've never really been one to use solid bags, to be honest. So the reasons being behind that is because I never, I was never keen on the rigs that people use, you know, the short little braided rigs, and I wasn't overly keen on the silicon on the hook and sort of the way the hook baits would sit. I just, it just wasn't a rig that sort of appealed to me as such. But then I saw this, I actually saw this on one of Joe Morgan's carp angle videos and he caught himself a few giants on it as well. And I thought, Do you know what? I like that setup. And the first time I actually used it, I was at Sandhurst and I had a couple of 40 pounders out of there using it. So straight away I was on, you know, confidence was well and truly high. And since then I've had multiple 40 pounders on this rig, including a 60 pound fully, in case you didn't realize I'd had a 60 pound fully last year on this rig as well. So to explain the actual setup, now I do get a lot of messages about it asking where can they see the video of how to tie this rig and this is the video you need to be watching. So to start off with the rig, I use the 35 pounds Naturals Soft Braid. Now, the 35 pound stuff might seem a bit extreme, but I like to have a nice strong hook link. Know that that is never ever gonna bust. So 35 pound for me is the perfect breaking strain. Now I start off with a size two wide gate beach. You might think that that is an extremely big hook, but again, you know, it's on the lake bed. They're not gonna see the hook. And I like a big bit of metal to know that once that goes into the fish's mouth, it's gonna catch hold and it's gonna stay there. I've always been a fan of big hooks, so I always try and use big hooks whenever I can get away with it. So a size two, wide gate big. Now we use a Palomar knot with soft braid. And reasons why you can't use something like the Grinner knot is because that will always slip with a soft braid. So always use a Palomar knot. And how you do that is you pass the braid through the eye then back through the eye so you're almost creating yourself a loop and then once you've got the loop you back it on itself so it's running alongside the braid and then you twist once and then you go back through the loop that's at the bottom right next to the eye of the hook you then pass the size two hook through that loop and then dampen it down and then pull it all nice together now, what you don't want to do at this point is cut off your excess straight away. You don't want to cut off, you know, a few mil next to the eye. Leave the excess bit of braided material there. I then measure off eight inches and then cut the braid away from the spool. I then create a figure of eight loop knot. Now, what I like to do is actually measure four inches of the actual hook link, hold it at four inches and then bring it back on itself and then create a figure of eight loop knot so that your knot is dead center of the actual rig. So your rig in total ends up being four inches exactly. Now the reasons why I like having the knot dead center of the rig is that then gives me a place to place my putty because it's supple braid, putty can slip every now and then. And I like a big bit of putty to be sat dead center of the rig. So having that knot in the center there is absolutely perfect for your putty to grip hold of. Now, before I actually put the putty onto the knot, I measure off three quarters of an inch of medium shrink tube. I then slide that onto the rig, and then you'll notice I only just go over the eye of the hook, and I'll explain the reasons why I only just about go over the eye of the hook a bit later on. So once your shrink tube's on, you can then put your putty onto the knot dead center of the rig where that knot is and then we move on to the hook section so I then grab myself a micro hook ring swivel I put that onto the hook now the way you want to put that on is obviously with the ring part of it so that the swivel is hanging off and then a size 2 hook bead and what you'll notice is I'll place the hook bead right the way round past the barb and then all the way down the back of the shank so that you've literally got about two or three mil gap between the eye and where the actual hook bead is. And you'll notice there's only a small, small gap there. 
Now the reasonings behind that is that just aids in the hooking properties. But again, we'll speak about that once the rig is finished. So next up after that, I then shrink my shrink tube in. So place the kettle on and so that you don't burn your hands, I grab some of our crimp pliers, hold the hook with the crimp pliers, and then I put a gentle curve in the shrink tube in as I'm steaming it off. So once you've steamed that off, as you'll notice, you've got that nice, lovely, gentle curve there. You, what it does is just aids that hooking property of that hook and the hook holds that I've had from this have been unbelievable. So that is exactly perfect of how I like the shrink tube in to look. So hook bait wise, I either like to use a 10 mil pop up or one of our large pieces of corn. So to actually put the corn on, I then place it onto a baiting needle lengthways as well. Make sure that you come out the very bottom of the corn, dead center of it as well. I then grab myself a little bit of bait floss, cut off about three or four inches of bait floss, and then put that through the little hook ring swivel, and then place my corn over the top of that bit of bait floss. I then pull the swivel inside the bit of corn, but not so that you go past the barrel of the swivel, because you still want that bit of rotation, that little bit of movement there. So it's really important that you don't go past the actual barrel of the swivel itself. About halfway is perfect. Trim off the top, leave about three or four mil, and then blob that down with your lighter that your missus bought you. Right, uh, so that's pretty much your rig tied. Now, these are the reasonings behind why I absolutely love this rig. Now, it looks a bit alien, obviously, having that bead right the way far back where the eye is of the hook, but you'll notice as that hook bait moves up through the water as if it was about to go into a fish's mouth. You can see how heavy that hook point is. It's always dropping down so that it is ready to catch hold in the bottom lip. And I absolutely love that. That is one of the key features of this rig that I absolutely love and why it's caught me so, so many big ones as well. And the other reasoning with this huge bit of putty here is again that just in aids in that hooking properties of that hook dropping down into the bottom lip. It's the reasons why I've got such a big loop on this side of it. Not only is it easy to put onto the swivel section but I like the fact that if a fish was to pick this rig up and get away with it and spit it back out you've still got that slightly bit of stiffness there where you've doubled over with the braid so that it will settle back down and still be fishing for you. Right, so with the lead in arrangement, I actually use that with our inline drop off kit. So, to put that together, what you want is a double ringed swivel. So, one of the rings is for your lead core or your main line. For this instance, I'm using the naturals lead core. So, you tie the naturals lead core or your main line onto one of the rings, and then on the other ring that's on there, that's where your rig goes. So to attach the rig to the actual double ring swivel, what you want to do is pass your huge end, the big loop of one end of the rig through the ring and then pass the other end, so your hook section, through that loop and then pull it down nice and tight. And as you'll notice, it's lovely and streamlined. You're not having to put any sort of uh, tail rubbers or anything else on there. That's absolutely perfect the way it is. And not only that, it just gives you that nice bit of movement where it's sat inside the lead system itself. And then the actual swivel itself, that's where you put the plug on top of that and that sits inside your lead. You've then got an insert at the very top here that just slides straight on to your lead core or your main line, whatever you're using. And the lead system itself, this is an impact lead. Now, to actually put this on, I've got a nice little tip for you here. Nice and easy to do. As you'll notice, you can't quite get your fingers in the bottom of these leads. So if you just put the plug in the very bottom there first, just get it in as far as you can with your fingers. You can't put it all the way home, but grab your insert that's on the other side and use that as a tool to push the plug into the bottom of the lead. You then notice that we've got a slit all the way going up through the center of the lead. That's where your line will sit, or your lead core in this instance. And then all you do is push your insert into the top, like so. And then that 
is a perfect drop-off system. So the minute the fish pick that rig up, feel the full tension of the lead system, you'll notice that the rig itself is actually coming out of the center there and they're feeling the full weight of that lead the minute that that rig gets tightened. Then straight away, the bottom plug, that'll fall out. Then you've got your insert at the top, that will drop away and then you've got a nice streamlined bit of kit there to get your fish in. So that's the rig that I like to use for my solid bag fishing. And as you'll notice on the underwater stuff that we did last year, it was a devastating rig on that. And again, in case you didn't know, I actually caught myself a 60 pound fully on this rig right here. So tie yourself one up, get out there, get using it and catch yourself some giants.